The attic for me was one of the few places I could go as a kid to feel accepted. It was the one place we could go at that age and just express ourselves and be around other kids doing the same thing safely. The attic was a very, very important part of my childhood. It's what I did for every weekend for like two whole years. In the early 2000s, the attic in Kettering, Ohio was the ultimate hangout spot for teenagers. It was a place where kids from all around the Miami Valley could see live music. For many young musicians, this stage was the first experience of that feeling of being a rock star. I was a lead singer and rhythm guitar player for a band called Bonneville, and I can remember playing at the attic for the first time and walking in and seeing their four foot tall stage and massive tower speakers and one of my fondest memories from playing at the attic was when we had the opportunity to open for a band called Hawthorne Heights uh, right after they released a song called Ohio is for Lovers and it was a sold out show and I can remember looking out and not being able to see where the crowd ended and I felt like a total rock star back then. I remember one distinct moment where I heard the kick drum and I didn't just hear, I felt it in my chest and that was just a crazy experience. Since then I've just been hooked to uh, music and live sound. That was a place that was big enough and made you feel like a real band, even if there was only four of your buddies watching. Devil Rush Prodding, I'm pretty sure they did their first show in my venue, but then long since forgot about me. But, but, uh, but you know, bands like that, to see them go off and do well, that's really cool. For over a decade, Jim Kilby ran the Teen Center along with volunteers. The nonprofit organization was a passion project for the local pastor to create a safe space for teenagers. So many people that love music, love local music, play music, the attic comes up in conversation all the time. What's it like for you having been the one that planted that seed? I mean, that's always a good feeling. You want to feel like you made an impact on somebody's life in a positive way. And I know that there's you know thousands of stories that that's the case. I wish it was still going on. If it was easier to raise money, you know, it would probably still be going on. Kilby says the stock market crash of 2008 was the initial blow that would ultimately lead to the attic closing. The attic's final years were a constant uphill climb. Donors who once contributed thousands to keep the attic running suddenly had to start thinking about their own financial well-being. And a lot of people just said, man, we, you know, we're on retirement or whatever and our, we don't have the income to give anymore. The rent in the attic was almost 10,000 bucks a month. So that just basic break it down, if you got four weekends a month, that means you have to have $2,500 a week just to pay the rent. You know, you get a couple bucks at the door, um, you make a little bit off the of selling of a Pepsi or a water bottle. We're only open on Friday night and Saturday night. You're not even making any money the rest of the time, but you're paying rent 31 days a month. Kilby says that same trickle down effect made it increasingly difficult to afford larger bands. Behind the scenes, many times, more than I can count, I would have to go home and get a check, you know, from my wife or out of my personal account and write the difference. The Attic's inclusive all ages atmosphere helped spark a new wave of fans in the Dayton area music scene. Many of those young patrons have grown up and are now doing their part to build the music community. Having those all ages venues, I think, really helps our scene grow. It helps the younger generation see the local bands and makes them even want to start a band. Because that's how I came up wanting to start a band, was I would see all these great bands play, and that just made me want to play music. Kilby says he just recently paid off all his debt from the attic, but he's never sold off any of the equipment that once gave bands a voice. It's just collecting dust right now, but there is still hope. I didn't get rid of it. Some of my best memories from my teenage years are definitely uh, from the attic. I can't imagine another place that I enjoyed being more. I played shows at the Attic for many years uh, in local bands. I uh, had a chance to book my own show there for my birthday one year. Planting that seed for me was important for what I'm doing today with booking concerts locally in Dayton. I did security, I did sound, um, I loaded in bands. I, I wanted to do youth ministry ever since I was 14. And the Attic was a, a place where I could learn. It got me out of a dark place in time. It got me to learn how to actually care for myself, and I got to learn a lot about new people and how to socialize, I guess. I met basically all my friends through the attic, including this guy, and seven years later we're living together. 
The attic was a place that I could go a few times a week to feel like I fit in, to hang out with other kids who maybe felt like they couldn't uh, fit in at their schools either. And we used music as an excuse to get together and build deep, meaningful, long-lasting relationships.